as we wait for a new Dragon Ball anime. And while the Dragon Ball Super manga is recapping the events of Dragon Ball Super Superhero, a lot of people are wondering what the future for the series will be. Well, some future arcs have already been hinted at. The most obvious one is a Black Frieza arc. I doubt another invasion of Earth would happen, but with Broly needing to be hidden from Frieza, it does seem possible that he's hunting potential foes. A lot of fans have speculated on this already, but I believe a God Butcher arc for Black Frieza could be pretty interesting, so long as it feels different enough from what Goku Black and Zamas did. His goals in the Tournament of Power had to do with overthrowing gods, so perhaps he's tired of simply being the self-described Emperor of the Universe and now wants to solidify himself as the God of the Multiverse. In terms of battles, I think Broly versus Frieza is actually being set up pretty heavily, with the idea being that Frieza would win if Broly can't control himself. I could even see the fight going in Broly's favor after his training with Goku, until Frieza taunts Broly about his dead father, maybe even revealing that he was the one who killed Paragus, causing Broly to lose control and ultimately lose the fight. We'd also, of course, have another Goku versus Frieza rematch, and while I think these are always fun, I doubt another Goku W is what the story is leading to, so maybe like the beginning of the Granola arc, or even the fight with Androids 19 and 20 in Z, Goku will be taken out early to give Vegeta and the others a chance to shine. I actually think Vegeta is a contender to get the W against Frieza, but is the way to show someone has moved on from their past to have them focus on revenge? The Granola arc seems to want us to think differently, so it's possible Resurrection F really was Vegeta's only chance for a win against Frieza. I'm still down for Vegeta to win though, I'm just not sure if it's realistic in the current story direction. If Frieza does beat the three full-blooded Saiyans and decides to invade Earth after, he won't have an easy time since Orange Piccolo and Beast Gohan are ready for him. While Orange Piccolo is likely well below Black Frieza's power, Beast Gohan has yet to be compared directly against people like Ultra Ego Vegeta and Ultra Instinct Goku, aside from the vague statements of course. This fight could even be thematic for Gohan if he's the one to win. Resurrection F specifically got him to start training again to protect his family, but with the Beast form now, he might actually have the power to handle this himself, especially if he seriously trains in his free time. This could be the moment that finally shows us what a Gohan that kept the promise to protect his loved ones looks like, and he might even be the one to beat Black Frieza because of it. Which leaves me with one more interesting fight that could happen before the climax of this arc, Beerus versus Black Frieza. Beerus has the most obscure scaling in the whole series. While the manga does show Beerus fighting at full power, we have no reason to believe he's lying to the Grand Priest of all people, that fight has all the gods of destruction as fairly relative to one another, with Catella and Beerus being slightly above the rest. Belmod doesn't even require healing after the fight though. He's even able to trap every god of destruction in barriers, then uses key cards to slice them up, and Beerus couldn't do anything about it, so he's clearly not that far behind. Jiren is directly stated to be stronger than Belmod in the manga, no rumors needing to be confirmed like the anime, and Goku is far stronger than he was when he fought Jiren. So you'd think it'd be confirmed that Beerus is behind Goku and Vegeta, but that not being confirmed blatantly in the narrative is a big sign that it still may not have happened happened yet. A Black Frieza fight could finally resolve the growing tension between the god and the emperor, as well as definitively put Beerus's power into perspective. If you ask me though, there's another arc that should happen before Beerus fights anyone seriously. You see, modern Dragon Ball started with Battle of Gods and Beerus's hunt for his greatest rival, the Super Saiyan God. Later in the Dragon Ball Super manga, just before the Tournament of Power, the prophecy of Beerus's greatest rival is expanded to include both Goku and Vegeta. But but it's something that Beerus just can't believe. He even beats up Vegeta just to prove how absurd it is for them to be his rivals. The plot keeping the prophecy of Beerus's greatest rival alive is seemingly pointing towards a rematch at some point. Perhaps a second battle of gods with both Goku and Vegeta taking turns to prove themselves against Beerus after all the training and growth they've done. I think this arc needs to happen before Beerus participates in any fights, because seeing him lose to someone Goku or Vegeta end up beating would remove all the tension from that story. Sad to say, if Dragon Ball Super was planning to end overall with the Tournament of Power, using the last few episodes and chapters to cover a Goku Beerus rematch would have perfectly bookended the story. Unfortunately, we missed that one chance, and ending the series with the rematch would just feel a bit empty at this point. 
so I think a mini arc is gonna have to do. Speaking of mini arcs, a quick trip to Universe 6 could be a lot of fun, especially if it splits up Goku and Vegeta. We all know Vegeta promised to visit the Universe 6 Saiyans at some point, even planning on meeting their king, who is apparently similar to himself. The way I see this arc going is giving Goku and Vegeta different activities with their Saiyan disciples. Vegeta would go with Kaba into Saiyan society, perhaps learning about their history and differences to the Saiyans he knew in his youth, culminating in him meeting the king of the Saiyans, and possibly learning how they changed from the path of the Universe 7 Saiyans. Meanwhile, Goku could be caught up with other activities like training Khalifla and Kale, sparring the two as he helps refine their abilities. This could culminate with Khalifla getting Super Saiyan 3, while Kale fully controls her powers, perhaps in the same way Goku is teaching Broly to. A good end to their training would be Goku teaching the two the fusion dance, allowing them to fuse in dire situations without the need of Patara earrings. And if we're really lucky, Goku might test this new fusion out not only against himself, but maybe against others, like Broly if he gets to come along on this trip, or against Hit and his time manipulation, which would be a fun action set piece to tie up the arc with. If you're wondering about Goku's desire to train others, it's been a running theme since the Cell Saga. But of course, his most anticipated disciple is Oob, the reincarnation of Kid Buu as a pure-hearted person. The end of Z is the canon ending to the original manga, and it's been stated that it won't be retconned by Dragon Ball Super. Toyotaro even said, we are preparing the ground to direct Dragon Ball Super into the original Dragon Ball Z ending. After Super Heroes release, even Toriyama was calling it the story right before the final chapter of the original manga, so it's seemingly up next in the timeline. Even though it already exists, I do think a retelling to cover some of the minor discrepancies would be huge. Fix up little things, like the amount of time it's been since Bulma has seen Goku. She says in the original manga ending, it's been five years since she's last seen Goku because of his training trips, which Super actually explains well, with training being mostly done on Beerus' planet. Since Dragon Ball Super Superhero is just before the end of Z, about a year before, this actually means that Goku wouldn't have seen Bulma in around four years by the time end of Z takes place. Not nearly as big of a discrepancy as people seem to think. There's also other characters to worry about now, so instead of focusing on the 28th Tenkaichi Budokai like the original version did, we can see other characters and what they're doing at the time of the tournament. Like, where are Broly, Beerus, and Whis during this? I think the use of B-plots for a retelling of the end of Z could keep things fresh while establishing some important points. But nothing should be more important than Oob. We now have context for just how strong Goku is, and with his involvement in the Moro arc, we have reason to believe that Oob is also stronger than we could have ever anticipated. He's not just Kid Buu again, he's like the fully realized potential of Kid Buu. Perhaps tying back to the fact that those with pure hearts tend to be the strongest in the series. Goku, Gohan, and even Zeno all have a purity to them, so why wouldn't this apply to Kid Buu's reincarnation as well? Of course, this means we can have some sections of the story dedicated to showing Oob's training, perhaps even having him introduced to other disciples of Goku, like Khalifla, Kale, and even Broly. But most importantly, if we do finally cover the end of Z, the story can move outside of the 10-year time skip it's been stuck in and go into uncharted territory without the baggage of the past weighing it down. Speaking of the past, why not have future Trunks come back looking for help again? I'm kidding. That would genuinely be a terrible decision, especially with how badly they butchered his original ending in Z with his new ending in Super. I really think Oob should be the last thing that rhymes with Dragon Ball Z. We have the revivals of Frieza to tie back to the events of Namek, the creation of Cell Max to call back to the Cell Saga, and Oob's existence interrupting a tournament just like Boo did. If we're going to rehash anything after this, it should be modern material with a spin. So why not another tournament of power? I've spoken about a second tournament of power in detail in two other videos, but those were focused on the competitors and how they've changed or grown since the last tournament. Here I want to talk about the narrative. I think it could be quite different from the original while still using it as a foundation. The first big change could be in the format. We're not in Fortnite dominated times anymore, so a battle royale isn't really necessary. This could help to limit the team sizes and not rely on constant fighting. We don't need to see every fight between members of the fodder universes, so that could 
could allow a more interesting story to be fleshed out off of the arena floor. That's a long shot though. So assuming it is another battle royale, I do think it would likely be interrupted in some way or at least have the stakes changed a bit. Not only because Team Universe 7 seems like they'll be unstoppable now, but also because it'd be boring to do the same thing again. I spoke about this a bit in a recent video, specifically the idea that Universes 13 through 18 could have been revived by Android 17's Wish and they might rebel against Zeno, which could be an interesting way to have us question the structure of the multiverse. There's also the possibility that Universes 13 through through 18 fight the six lowest ranked universes to determine who gets to keep existing. Basically, after realizing these six universes were mistakenly revived, the Zenos go to erase them again. But before they can, the gods of those universes plead to the Zenos to spare them. This leads to the Grand Priest revealing how they were accidentally restored by a wish made after Universe 7 won a tournament, so they ask for the same courtesy to fight for their own existence against the other lowest ranked universes. As you can see, there are a lot of ways this could play out differently. One idea I also really like goes back to the first idea in this video, Black Frieza. If he really wants to rule the multiverse, finding a way to sabotage another tournament of power so that he wins the Super Dragon Balls or even has a chance to take down the Zenos when they're off guard could make for an interesting way to vary up this retread of an old concept. Needless to say, Dragon Ball Super has a lot of ways to keep going. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and thank you so very much for watching.